This week's video is about cooking live rock. And it's an important topic because I see people doing all kinds of crazy bad things. So I'm hoping you'll watch this whole thing all the way through, no skipping ahead, learn what's good and what's bad. And then from that point forward, you will have live rock that you can use safely. So for part of this video, I'm gonna need you to use your imagination a little bit. I do have some rock. We're going to pretend it's live rock. My buddy AJ came over, brought me some rock that's going in his new tank. And I'm going to act like this is live rock that I want to save and make it usable. Let's imagine it has Aptasia on it. Let's imagine it has green hair algae on it, cyano, feather dusters, whatever. But it's living rock. This isn't dry rock. This is actually came from the ocean. It was in some guy's tank. I bought it used. It's got issues. And I want to solve that and I want to save money. Now, when you buy live rock normally, it costs you two bucks a pound used. When you buy it from the fish store, nice, ready to go rock out of the ocean, it's more like $8 a pound. So what we're going to do here, I want to explain to you how to cook it. So you need a bucket or you need something bigger. Here are some bigger containers. Uh, this is a common trash can that I got at Walmart years ago. I probably had it 10 years. This one I got about seven, eight years ago from a farm and tractor supply. This was usually originally for Dr. Pepper syrup. So it's food grade. It's something you can definitely use. And I bought it used for 20 bucks, which is a great deal. A regular trash can. This one is a Rubbermaid container was like $7. And then I took one and I chopped it up to actually use it for a different project one time. I was using it to hold some rock. It let me glue some pieces together. I worked with sand in here. I mixed concrete in here. And I still had this thing, you know, eight years later. Uh, let's talk about this trash can for a second. When you fill this up with your rock and you put water inside of it, you can then take the lid of the trash can and put it on upside down. And that way, as there's condensation within the unit and within the system, it'll just drip back down. You never have to top off. Super convenient, so it's nice to have a lid. If you don't have a lid on your project, for example, we're using this barrel right here, and we have rock in there, light is going to still go in, and you could grow some nuisance algae if it's somewhere near sunlight. If you're doing this outdoors, I would cover it with something so it's in pitch darkness. That's part of why it's called cooking live rock. What I don't want you to do is cook live rock on the stove. I don't want to hear anything about doing this into this because the steam that's coming off could actually hurt you badly. If there's zoas on here or palithoa and you're boiling your rock because you think I want to kill things on it, that's a mistake. First of all, you're not supposed to kill the live rock. We're trying to cook it. We're not trying to kill it. And if you were inhaling the fumes coming off of palithoa, it would actually affect your nervous system and it could put you in the hospital. So no cooking whatsoever. Turn all this stuff off. We're not using any pots and pans. We're not boiling anything. We're definitely not using any steam. One more thing that I've seen people do that I think is dangerous and I don't recommend is to have a propane torch. And they like to use this to kill Aptasia. So they'll get a flame going, they take the rock outside and they're like, burn trying to kill the Aptasia. I wouldn't do that because the risk is that you may end up causing the rock to explode. It's usually pretty porous and with that heat on there while you're burning something off, I get it. Avoid that. That's not what this is about. That was just a side thing to keep you in mind. Avoid it. So what's involved in actually cooking? Do you need vinegar? Do you need acid? No, not at all. Vinegar or muriatic acid is a way to kill live rock. We want to cook the live rock. So we're going to get rid of the vinegar. What we need is a bucket and a lid, just like we have the trash can with a dome. And this is for a smaller amount of rock for a person with a smaller tank. But if you have a large tank, you're going to use a big barrel. But in this case here, we're going to take our piece of live rock that we just bought. We're going to put it inside the barrel, this bucket. We're going to add salt water. Oh, so heavy. <laughs> And we're adding enough water to cover the rock completely. And that's it. You don't need it to the top. My water's to about here. I'll show you in a second what it looks like. Then I would add a power head for circulation. I'd plug it in the wall, leave the lid on top, and you're done. It's cooking. I know you're thinking, so what? What's next? What's happening is the detritus in the rock, the phosphate in the rock, the things that were on it that bothered you, they're going to start dying off but the bacteria is going to keep living. Having it in this situation inside of a container of salt water that's covered is ideal for keeping bacteria alive, but killing off the things you don't really like. 
If you need to go in there later and scrape off some kind of coral that you didn't like, or if you need to scrape away Aptasia, you can still do that. But basically what you're gonna do is keep the rock inside this bucket of salt water for weeks. And after a couple of weeks, you can pour out the salt water and put in new fresh salt water. You can even do this. You can have your second bucket of salt water next to the first one. This is your new bucket of salt water. You take your power head out. And I just used a maxi jet for the point of this demo, but you can use any pump you like. If you have a mag pump, that's fine. You would take your rock and you submerge it several times in the used salt water that's been sitting in for the last couple of weeks. And now we've shaken off a lot of detritus and this water will be really brown and muddy. And you just take the rock, move it to the other barrel of salt water. It's submerged. Move your power head into here. Put your lid on top. Throw this away. Wait two more weeks. And if you just do this for a period of six weeks to eight weeks, your used rock that you bought dirt cheap will be live rock you can use in your aquarium. That's what cooking live rock is. So as you can see, there's some circulation, just a minimal amount. And if you are doing this in the dead of winter and you're worried about the water getting too cold, a big, huge power head or a big pump will add heat to the water. If you want, you could add a heater too. I've never really worried about heating live rock. If the water is about 65 to 70 degrees or so, that's totally fine. You can take it all the way up to 80 if you want, but I've never added a heater. I just kept it inside the same room as my aquarium. But if you're storing this in the garage and it's going to be really cold or in the basement, then yes, add a heater or find a way to insulate the container. Matter of fact, you could use an, an igloo cooler, which is a great insulator if you're just doing a little bit of rock. Some of the things you may be wondering, what about salinity? The salt water I use is the same salt water I would use in my reef. I wouldn't use used salt water because that already has nitrate and phosphate in it. You're trying to remove it from the rock. So I'd use new salt water. I like 1.026. You can go a little less if you want. It's not going to affect much. Uh, would you like to skim this? That is also a good process of dealing with uh, cooking live rock. If you have the ability to use like a larger bin where you can put the rock and you can put a skimmer in the corner and you're skimming that water and dumping that collection cup out, that's another good system that helps get the rock clean a little quicker. But it really is a six to eight week project. And then once you're done, let's say you've gone eight weeks. We've got a rock. It's all nice and clean. It smells fresh. There's nothing black on it. It might have sponges encrusting on it. That's a good thing. You immediately move it into your tank of salt water. If you take your live rock out of salt water and leave it exposed to air for a duration of time, and when I say duration, I'm talking about a couple of hours, what's gonna happen is the sponges are gonna die off. You're gonna put your nice live rock in your tank and it's gonna start to cycle because the ammonia coming off the dead sponges is happening. So I always keep my rock submerged until I need it and then I move it right into my tank. If you um, don't plan to use this rock for a long time, that's fine. I had a huge barrel of rock for about five or six or seven years in the back bedroom that was just sitting there with circulation. And every three or four months I'd go in there and I'd add a little bit of water because it needed to be topped off slightly. But it really wasn't, um, it didn't use any electricity I was concerned about. And I had all the rock I needed when I set it up my 400 gallon. That was really cool. Then I set up the 60 gallon and still had enough rock. And then you guys saw me set up the 60 gallon frag system and I had the last of my rock. Now I'm rock free and I had to have AJ come over with his rock just for the point of this video. This is the Cobalt MJ1200 and this is a pump that I sell in my shop if you need it. And you can also use this nice handheld pump to, for example, you were trying to clean off this rock in the water, you could actually point the jet and hit it from different angles to shake out the detritus out of it. These pumps are in stock and I'm happy to send one your way. Thank you so much for watching this week. I hope you found this informative. Please, I want you to do me a favor with this video. I want you to share it. And the reason I want you to share it is because I'm tired of seeing people cook rock on their stove in the kitchen, or they're burning it with acid, or you're burning it with flames, or you're boiling it under vinegar water. Just stop. Cook your live rock a safe way so you can use your rock. If you're trying to eliminate every speck of life, then cooking live rock is not what you should be doing. But I don't recommend it. Let the bacteria live in your tank. Let those little critters that are alive, copepods, amphipods, those are good guys. Why kill everything on your rock? It's a natural biosystem and your reef needs these little critters. And for you to eliminate every last one of them, I think is a huge mistake. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week.
say, Mark, now that we've covered everything and I've cooked my live rock, what do we do next? You stay tuned to this channel. You'll learn the next step. That's amazing. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> I might use it as a blooper.